bright duty. Every student matters. The next Sunday afternoon, Pip went to Walworth to hear Wemmick's Walworth sentiments, what he felt about the entire situation. But while he was waiting for Wemmick to return home from work, Pip learned about uh, learned from the aged uh, person, his father, that his father used to work in warehouse in Liverpool, London, and that he had raised Wemmick to go into a wine cooperating, you know, a wine company, not law. Wemmick returned from his walk with Miss Kiffins, who was a lady Wemmick was dating. When, uh, Pip and Wemmick take a walk around the property to discuss about the thoughts and the questions that were bothering Pip. And Pip described his wish to invest money in Herbert's future as he has never mentioned the idea before. This uh, intrudes or this makes Wemmick very inquisitive to know about Herbert's life. He wanted to know why was Pip so much keen to invest money into Herbert's future. Pip explained that he wanted to plan an, uh, the investment so secretly that Herbert would not realize that at all. Wemmick responded to it by commending, by applauding Pip for being kind and he agreed to carry out the plan with the help of Miss Kiffin's brother who was an accountant. Now, Pip stayed at the castle and he had tea with Wemmick, Miss Kiffins and his father. Throughout the tea time, Wemmick tried to, you know, uh, was trying to get friendly with Miss Kiffins, but she was not allowing him to do so because obviously that is how the culture is. And, you know, one should always be very cordial and very quiet and very nice around the family. So that is why Mrs. Uh, Miss Skiffins was not letting Wemmick get into any sort of a personal affair with her at that time when they were around the family. Now Wemmick carried out Pip's plan and met him again and again several times at Walworth and in London. Now, they arranged for a merchant's house. There was a merchant's house which was known as Clerical and Company. And they offered the plan or the plan was, uh, you know, made in accordance with this company. Herbert did not know that he owed his job to Pip's secret investment. So, he got a job at Clerical and Company and he did not know that it was all because of Pip and was very happy. Pip was also emotional and teary-eyed because he was happy for his friend and was happy that he was helping somebody. He was doing good to somebody and that his expectations were turning out better. Now, he was still in love, deep love with Estella for that matter and Pip visited her very often at Richmond. Pip was on a very familiar term with Estella now and uh, other suitors. There were a lot of other people whom Estella was meeting but Pip was at a better term than them because of their past relationship. But obviously... That was not romantic because Estella never gave any heat to Pip. She did not make him feel any special. And one day Estella informed Pip that Miss Havisham had asked him to escort her to the Satis house, that is Miss Havisham's house back. There, Miss Havisham talked about stories of how Estella had multiple men who wanted to marry her, again poking Pip to, you know, to take some initiative or to propose to her. And, uh, you know, this is how Pip deduced. He understood that Miss Havisham had secretly uh, married Estella to Pip. 
and then he had then she had sent estella out to the world so that she would find the other suitors also and obviously would be able to see how the revenge takes place okay so the reason why he thought miss havisham had sent estella to find the other suitors was so that when estella was going to tell the other suitors about pip she was going to give them heartbreak and that is what miss havisham had wanted the entire night now later pip saw that miss havisham and estella argued for the first time in his presence estella pulled away herself from miss havisham's grip and miss havisham grew mad she got in hysterical and accused her blamed her for being ungrateful to her for whatever she's done for her cold heartedness for being so arrogant and haughty estella very calmly replied that i am exactly what you have made me Miss Havisham wanted Estella to love her, you know, as a mother. And Estella was, and Estella told to Miss Havisham that I cannot give you something that you never gave me. So this throws light on the kind of relationship that Estella and Miss Havisham st- uh, shared. Miss Havisham, uh, you know, insisted that Estella should love her. but estella very calmly replied to the fact that she cannot and uh, you know they continued to argue in front of pip now at a finches this is a place of the grove meeting sometime later drumul told pip that he had made an acquaintance with estella that he knew estella now pit got very angry and he told him that if you want to be with estella you'll have to fight with me so he actually proposed drumul for a duel for a fight which was cancelled one uh, which was cancelled because drumul produced a note from estella confirming that she and drumul actually knew each other Thereafter, Pip was very sad to observe that Drummel started dating Estella and was gaining position among the other suitors that Estella had. Pip talked to Estella one night at the ball and warned her that Drummel was not a good person; that he was not worthy of her love. Estella was not at all bothered about it, and very coolly she was indifferent, and she just said that all the ugly creatures, you know, they are always going to complain about a lighted candle. She said that people like Pip, who themselves are so unworthy. will always continue to complain about people who were more worthy than the others around when pip con- confronted to estella that he was jealous of drumul and she he wanted her attention estella very angrily asked him what uh, you know whether pip wanted her to deceive and entrap him that whether pip just wanted that she should cheat him and she should just keep him all the time with herself she told him that that is what she was doing to drummel and the other suitor she was cheating them she was just keeping herself connected with them she had no feeling she had no affection to any one of them Pip was now twenty three. He had left Mister Pocket's classes and he studied on his own in in London. He and Herbert have moved from Bernard's Inns to the Temple Inn, Garden Court. Now one dark and stormy night, when Herbert was away for some work, Pip received a visitor, a mysterious, a strange visitor. 
he was a rough and a man who was almost bald no hair on his hair and his way of talking was also very ill mannered it indicated a low class to this shock to his shock this man they realized was the convict he had helped on the mattress the convict called pip as noble pip and commented and complimented pip for being so noble towards him when he was a child pip tried to turn him out of his house but he was not able to because the convict was very kind and affectionate towards him and therefore he invited the convict to come over for a drink the convict reveals that he was the pip's patron so finally a very important revelation made in the story pip was assuming miss havisham to be his patron but it was actually the convict pip was speechless when he heard it he was horrified and he nearly fainted the convict explained how he had been saving for years working as a shepherd in the new south wales so that he could spend the money to make pip a gentleman he said to pip that i am your second father he was proud of what pip had turned out to be the convict asked pip to help him hide he explained that he had come to london illegally he had run away from a life sentence in the colonies and he will be hanged if he is caught pip gave the convict the bedroom that was being used by herbert and he sealed all the doors and the shutters pip stayed up late at night trying to digest what he had just got to know he was devastated that it was not miss havisham uh, or estella but uh, the convict and he also thought that miss havisham had done this because she wanted pip to marry estella and now everything was a farce he was even more devastated to realize that he had left behind joe and biddy for a criminal you know a man who was violent who was potentially violent and thinking about all this pip actually got afraid and scared of this man and he after he had made sure that the convict was asleep he locked him into his room the next morning pip decided that he was going to tell his maids and the temple watchmen that the convict was that the convict is his uncle now when he was coming out he stumbled upon he almost saved himself from falling upon a man who was crouching who was sitting on his knees in the dark outside his apartment when pip and the watchman returned with a light to search the hall the stranger was not there but the watchman informed pip that pip's uncle entered the temple and there was another man who had come behind him over breakfast pip was disgusted when he saw the manners of the convict he asked the convict about the man in grey clothes but the convict did not notice him and did not know who he was after the breakfast pip uh, he tossed he gave to pip a fat pocket book of money announcing that he will make pip into a gentleman to show to all the colonists and all the judges who have made him angry he wanted the money to be spent on somebody he loved and he spent the money on making a person a gentleman pip was very distressed and disappointed and he demanded to know what was the plan in convict's mind the convict explained that he planned to stay with pip in london he uh, said that he was going to disguise himself he's going to change his appearance and is going to be called as provis although his real name is abel magwitch he 
called Pip dear boy and watched him with a lot of admiration and love and applauses. Pip also, uh, Pip was once stopped, uh, stopped by Mr. Jagger's office to ask if the news he had heard that it was the convict who was his benefactor was true and Mr. Jagger confirmed the fact and insisted that Pip describe Magwitch as a man who was living in New South Wales and Provis as a separate person in England conveying the information so that there is no discrepancy. So Abel Makovic was living in South Wales and this man, Provis, was from England. Pip bought Provis new clothes to wear but he observed that there was a lot of, uh, you know, personality issues with Provis with the convict being in the prison for such a long time that no matter how hard he tried, he just could not change his personality. He tried five days hating uh, the mannerisms of the convict and wondering, thinking about the crimes that the Provis had committed and dreaming of how he can run away from this convict. And then Herbert returned from the trip that he was on. So my dear students, I'm going to pause here now and in my next lecture, we begin with chapter 41 and discuss what happened later on. So I'll see you soon in my next lecture. Thank you.